What's going on guys, John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at the tab view for custom Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at tabs, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at tabs and custom Kinter. So you can see I could tab back and forth from tab one and tab two. Tab two doesn't have anything on it. Tab one just has a button. I'll show you how to do both of these types of things. And you can have as many of these tabs as you want. And it's a lot of fun. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this custom Kinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic custom Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm calling this ctk underscore tabs dot pi. And let's just come down here and create a tab. So to use tabs in custom Kinter, we use something called a tab view widget. And let's just come down here and create one. So I'm going to call this my tab. And this is going to be a custom tkinter dot ctk tab view. Now notice the V is lowercase. A lot of times when you have two words in custom Kinter, it's like the first one and the second one are capitalized, but not this time. Tab is capitalized and view is lowercase. So sort of keep that in mind. And we want to put this thing in root. And really, that's all we need for now. So now let's go my underscore tab dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 10 push down screen a little bit. So let's just go ahead and save this and see what we have right out of the box here. Not much to see. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory. And let's run Python ctk underscore tabs dot pi. And what we do, we just have this sort of outlined looking box thing. It's not very big. It doesn't stretch the whole width of the app and there's no tabs in it whatsoever. So we have to actually create the tabs. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's say create tab view and then come down here and let's say create tabs. And to create tabs, you just sort of name them. So I'm going to call one of them tab one and I'm going to call another one tab two. And like I said, you can have as many of these as you want. Just keep naming other tabs and you don't have to call them tab one and tab two, but it helps to keep track of which one is which by naming them with numbers. So I'm just going to use tab one and tab two. You could call it Bob one and Bob two or Bob and Tim or whatever. Any word works. Uh, so that's how you do that. So this is just going to be a my underscore tab dot add. And then we need to give this a little title, a little name that'll go on the actual tab itself. So I'm just going to say tab one. This is my underscore tab because that's what we named our tab view up here. So whatever you name it, you have to use that name here and then dot add something to it. So I could just copy this whole thing and add something here and say tab two. Now, if we save this and head back over here and run this guy again, we have these nice two tabs and we can tab back and forth and you can't really tell because we don't have anything in our tabs. So that begs the question, how do we put stuff in our tabs? So let's say put stuff <laughs> in tabs. And to do that, you just create whatever you want to put in there like you would any other custom Kinter widget. So let's just put a button for now. Let's go my underscore button. And this is going to be a custom tkinter.ctk button. Now, normally you would put this in root, but now we have these different tabs. So I want to put it in tab underscore one. If you wanted to put it in tab two, you would put it in tab two, right? So here we can say uh, the text equals click me. And you would normally give this a command, but we don't really need this button to do anything. We're just using it for visual purposes. So let's go my underscore button dot pack and let's give this a pad Y of like 40, really push it down the screen. So now if we save this, head back over here and run this guy again. We have in tab one, this button. And if we click to tab two, the button disappears because there's nothing in tab two. And that's all there is to it. So again, just think of each tab sort of like a frame and position things like you would in a frame and you'll have no problem whatsoever. So, all right, that's cool. Now, what else can we do with these tabs? Well, not a whole lot. You know, they just kind of click back and forth, but we can customize them in a bunch of different ways. So let's do that now. Let's head back over here and where we define our tab view, that's where you can customize it. And the first thing you're going to want to probably do is change the width and the height. So let's change this width to say 600 and the height to say, I don't know, 250 or something like that. Save this guy, head back over here, run it again. 
And now our tab stretches out nice and sort of wide to fit the size of the screen much better. It goes all the way down. I've, I've added, you know, I've left some space for padding around there, uh, but very cool. So there's that. We can also change the corner radius. So let's go corner radius, and I'm gonna set that equal to one to start out with. And we've done corner radius with like all the widgets and custom Kinter, so you're probably familiar with this. If we put it at one, it makes it very angular. It's almost like completely square, right? We could likewise make it more round by saying, I don't know, 20, something like that. Come back over here, run this guy again. And you'll notice not only is the box itself rounded, the tabs at the top are rounded too. So very cool. And the higher the number, the more rounded it's gonna be. Be careful if you go too much, let's say, I don't know, maybe even just 50. If we run this, oh, that still works. At some point, it's gonna be so rounded that it's gonna chop off what's inside of here. So just sort of take note of that and uh, you'll be fine there. So, okay, that's cool. I'm gonna change this back to 10. What else can we do? Well, we could change the color. So let's go FG color and maybe we wanna set this to white. And like everything in custom Kinter, you can use words like white or you can use, you know, hex codes, whatever. I think the hex code for this is FFF, FFF maybe or Zero, 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 whatever, whatever the hex code for white is, or you could just use the word white or whatever color you want. So head back over here, run this guy again, and now the entire framed tab thing is white. Uh, maybe you want that, that's kind of crazy. I'm gonna change this maybe to what, silver something. I don't know, I'm just playing now. All right, that's a little less harsh, right? So whatever color you like, there you go. Uh, what else could we do? Well, the buttons, have all kinds of different options. So we can change the segmented underscore button underscore FG underscore color. And let's set that equal to like red or something super obnoxious. So if we save this, the segmented button FG color, right? That is not actually the buttons, the background that holds the buttons, the foreground color. Now to me, that's that should be the background color, not the foreground. The foreground is the thing in the four whatever, that's what Custom Kinter calls the background color for most widgets, really. So that's red. What else can we do? Well, we can change the segmented underscore button underscore selected underscore color. A mouthful. Let's change this to green. So this is the color, as you might expect, of the button that is currently selected, right? So tab one is selected. We can see our button is in tab one if we click two it becomes green, right? So, okay. So to change the hover color, there's several different types of hovers involved here. So we can go segmented underscore button underscore selected underscore hover underscore color. And let's set that equal to say pink, save that and run it. And now when we hover over this one, nothing happens because it's not the selected button, but the tab one is already selected. So when we hover over that, it turns pink. So. A little weird, it's not just a blanket hover for anything, it, it really gets granular and you can pick exactly what hover you wanna change there, so that's cool. Likewise, we can also change the segmented underscore button underscore unselected underscore hover underscore color. And let's set that equal to, I don't know, say purple. Save this guy, run it just like you would expect. Now this time it's the one that's not selected, so you see it turns purple. This one still turns pink because it's selected. Now, if we click this one, now this one becomes the unselected hover color of purple and this one becomes pink. So, okay, we, <laughs> there we go. We've also got just this gray button that's unselected right now. We can change the color of that as well. So that's gonna be the segmented underscore button underscore unselected underscore color, I think. That sounds right. Yeah, let's set that to yellow. So, all right, save that, run it, yikes. So now the one that's not selected is yellow, <laughs> okay. Ugh, that's ugly. What else can we do? We could change the good old text color. So let's just go text underscore color and set that equal to, I don't know, let's say red. Now, one thing about this, you can't change the font easily on this, which is kind of a bummer, but we can just change the text color. So now that's red. You know, if I wanted to make tab one, the font size bigger, you can't really do that, which is, you know, 
kind of a bummer, like I said. So what else? We can, as always, change the state of this thing. So we could set the state to disabled, save this guy and run it. Now the whole thing is disabled. If I click, nothing really happens. That's, I don't know why you would want to do that, but you might want to do that. Uh, it's normal by default, and you can always set it back to normal by just setting it to normal. Uh, what else? We can give this a command, strangely enough. So let's give this a command of, say, clicker. All right, now we don't have this function yet, but we can create it. So let's come up here and define clicker. And when we do that, let's, I don't know, let's change the, the text of our button. So that was my underscore button. So we can come up here and go my underscore button dot configure and set the text to you clicked me or you clicked the tab button. I don't know, whatever. Go ahead and save this Head back over here, run this guy. So this is kind of cool and kind of not. So like if I click any of these things, this function will get called. So if I click this, well, we can't tell. We have to go back to tab one. Now the button says you click the tab button, right? So anytime you click any of these buttons, that function will get called. It's not great for singular tabs. If you just want a blanket function to run anytime you click any of these tabs, I suppose inside the function, you could say, hey, if tab one was clicked, do this. And if tab two was clicked, do that. I'll let you guys play around with that if you want. So that's really pretty much all there is to it. Now you'll notice these buttons are right in the middle and you should be able to move these around. Like if I want these buttons to be over here on the corner or over on this corner, you should be able to. And the documentation says that you can by using the anchor command and then setting it to your regular positions. So like North or South or Northwest or Northeast or, you know, Southwest or, you know, all the different positions. So in is default, north is the middle, I guess, for this. So if we wanted to set it to west, it should be like this. But you notice if we run this, boom, we get an error. It says the anchor is not supported. So I think this is a bug in custom Kinter because I haven't been able to figure out how to use the anchor. Sometimes if you use it just like this, that works in Kinter, but nope, not, not enough, not again. Sometimes if you put it in a tuple, and then do something like that. That works. Nope, still no dice. So I don't know, maybe it's just a, a bug. Maybe contact Tom Shemansky, <laughs> the guy that created Custom Kenter and let him know. Uh, but for now, it doesn't seem like you can use the anchor keyword or the anchor argument inside of the tab view. So sort of keep that in mind. And maybe on a Mac, it works. I don't know, maybe on a Linux, it works. But on Windows computer it does not seem to work. Uh, so they just sort of have to be in the middle like that. And that's kind of all there is to it. So that's the tab view. Very useful, very easy to do and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome. Over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address. And I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership and tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Older from tkinter.com. I'll see you in the next video.